still has a device on. <laughs> hey, <laughs> welcome to Andromeda 7, your celestial gateway, your channel for community support, help, friendship, love, knowledge, and just plain being of value to others. Welcome, everyone. And it's Friday again, and it's time to feed your mind and grow your heart. And tonight, we're super excited to have Sophia Rasmussen and Jim Pascala uh, here joining us tonight, talking about psychic connections um, and experiences. So I'm super stoked about this. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. Um, and then tonight, Dalibor is going to be my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Teresa has uh, bronchitis, everybody, and just cannot make it. Um, and I'm sure she's making an effort here in the chat room. Yes, most definitely. Um, let me go ahead and just greet everyone in chat real quick. Of course, Teresa, thanks for being with us. We love you and miss you. Jeannie Griffin, good to see you as well. Thank you. And, and thank you for all the uh, remedies and things you've been sending to Teresa. That's awesome. So good, good, good. Lucky Smith, always a pleasure having you with us. Uh, you have such great insight. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Brenda, Milky's mom, hey, good to see you. Always a pleasure. Uh, let's see who else, that's it for the moment. So we're good to go with that. And um, we're gonna be talking about paranormal, uh, psychic experiences and occurrences, uh, visions, dreams, memories of past lives, premonitions, uh, channeling other beings, and uh, engaging trapped spirits. Um, these synchronicities or meaningful coincidences are all just reveal what we are psychically in tune with the universe. Um, it's important to be mindful of them and to not just dismiss them as pseudoscience or anecdotal <laughs> evidence only of disturbed individuals, um, kind of has that kind connotation, but not as much as it used to. Why? Because they often help us engage more fully with one another and sometimes can even warn us of possible danger uh, ahead. Being psychic, nothing to be frightened of. It means we are more connected than we could even dream and more invested in each other's experiences. We know that embracing and honoring our psychic gifts helps us feel that connection and enhances our relationships and opens our abilities. Uh, so, um, well, gener generally speaking, ahead. I would say, I would say that it's important to see the totality of all these experiences that, you know, in and of themselves, they're extremely interesting and they all point in one direction that yes, there is a dimension above the one that we can see, you know, the so-called consensual reality, but it's all tied in together. And mm -hmm. the problem with the paranormal field is that usually the people that devote their time to say studying ghosts or studying UFOs, they don't usually talk with each other. Like the UFO people don't usually talk to the Bigfoot people and so on and so forth. Wow. But you know, when you analyze the totality of it and you're as interested in this stuff as I am, you mm -hmm. see the interrelationship between all of these phenomena. And as somebody who's experienced all of them, all of them mm -hmm. with the ex exception of alien abduction, uh, I can tell you that all of them are 100% for real uh, and they leave an indelible impression on your soul for the rest of your life. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, I was curious, um, Sophia, she's, she's a little bit frozen up. So I'm gonna go over to Jim here. Jim, I, I know you've been on the show before and loved having you and talking with you. And I was curious, um, uh, who do you rely on most for your inspiration uh, for your with your psychic abilities? I mean, who? Uh, what is the is energy that you- What do you mean as far as who's, I feel that it inspired me. I guess you just sense that I think it was in me all along. I know Sophia's going to say that's been her whole life, but mine was a little different because it took more of a, uh, just a knowing that just, I uh, try to adapt to the system as I was brought up in it and not rebellious, but I had inspiration given to me little bits and pieces. And then finally, when the time woke up, when I was 48 years old, all of a sudden I just had all the teachers I needed to show up in my life. So yeah. I was very blessed to just have a desire to seek something we call moving forward without an explanation of where it was going. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you that I was going to be doing this, you know, say, for a living when I was starting out this. I just said, 
I don't even know what it is other than I'm going to find out what it is. Right. So you just took it one step just at a time. I just kind of pushed myself to, into yeah. it. But I had all the support I basically needed. I had a partner at the time that worked with me very close in hand, and that was my wife who passed away. So I was very blessed to have a partner. So I would mm -hmm. say that was inspiration, absolutely, because when you find out your partner is not working with you, you do not grow spiritually. Right, right. Not because you don't want to. It stifles yeah. it because they're dancing yeah. around and tiptoeing on eggshells. Mm -hmm. That love and support is everything. And, and I, I even have a divine team that I work with. And man, I'll tell you, if it wasn't for that team and the close friendships that I have, um, yeah, there's the, <laughs> I don't think I could have got through it. But um, what about you, Sophia? Who do you rely on most for your inspiration? Um. I would say I most of I've walked alone most of my life. So um, my my husband is very supportive. I have um, friends like Jim and Brian that are supportive, but are kind of relatively new mm -hmm. um, past couple of years. But uh, rely very very heavily on the deity that I work with mm -hmm. and my personal guides so yeah and it's just here recently i've actually <laughs> but yeah we, we didn't catch that last part recently what happened just recently i've become more public with my abilities mm -hmm. um for fear i mean as far as you know the the lashback that can yeah. happen, and right. uh, I'm to the point where I honestly I don't care anymore. Yeah, they divided the far. You just can't worry I'm about it. Yeah, can't worry about what yeah. other people are thinking right. and feeling about what you're doing. It, it's more important for you to focus on what you're doing and not so much about what they think, um, because that just hinders you and you're not able to be authentically yourself. So. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Totally. Um, hey, hey, I have a question, actually. Sure, that, go ahead, Karen. I wanted to start right from the very beginning. Wonderful. At, because everybody's interpretation and perception in this reality is different from the time we're born. And I say, you know, so I, I just wanted to throw out, what is your idea of psychic experiences and connections to begin with? What's your idea of psychic, Jim? <laughs> well, that's a 99 cent question, of course. What, uh, what of course, that's why I asked it. <laughs> okay, so, uh, here's, here's a good example of my, I would call a, a very smidget of one, but I was about eight years of age. I'm sitting in the back seat of my parents' car, and I lived in a small town up in Michigan. And I, of course, I was raised in a parochial school, so we had a church that we attended. And I'm driving past some of the other churches in town, and I'm, this is my own thinking. Why are they are they praying to a different God? And I finally made the decision they were all praying to the same God. Nobody told me that. I just knew it. Mm. And I couldn't tell you how I knew it. I just knew it. Right. That was back yeah. to knowing. See, again, when it comes to inspiration from our own knowing is through our senses, which could be anything, your smell, your taste. Your, and I like the one I just call knowing. Yeah. yeah that's just and you can't explain it any ha -ha other than you or... just know it. Yeah, that's yeah. just an aha moment. No, that would definitely intuition. be one of my one realizations, just like I was 12 years old and decided that I was going to die someday and prepared yeah. for that when I was 12 years old of age already. Yeah. And wow. I can't explain why I, I knew I had to prepare for it, but I just said, well, make it a lot easier. So if and then when the time comes, I'm going to be ready to go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's annoying again. I can't explain to anybody. I just knew it. So that was part of the little bits and pieces when I was very young. And then finally, I, I was raised, we'll call it common, working every day to make a dollar bill, raise a family, and basic stuff that all humans pretty much exist sure. with. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, what happened to me when my life changed? Well, that's the spirit basically said, I think this guy's ready to finally do it. Ah. And that apparently was because it all came together. Hmm. Um, cool. How long did it take you to trust it? Um Probably only six months, maybe so, less. I, again, it happened so fast and quick once it started. It was like an avalanche of information, mm -hmm. acceptance, and encouragement. It was like there was nothing telling me to stop. 
Gotcha. Why should I stop when I, nothing tells me to stop? Right, right. Wow. And again, I, I just back to the knowing that I was chasing the right thing, if that makes sense. Right. Yep. You're in the right place at the right time, doing the right That's things. Right. It feels right. I you call just it can... inspiration of uh, spirit working with me, of course, and, and encouraging you because we all work with spiritual guidance. But again, you have the right. free will of choice of listening or mm -hmm. choosing not to, of course. Right. Yes, so exactly. Back to making the choice I made that said, okay, I'm going to inspire myself to be what I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure what that was. Yeah. <laughs> but you figured That's it out. You did thing. a great job. I don't job. even know what I was going to be <laughs> that makes sense, when I grew yeah. up. Right. So, to me, it sounds like just that you're saying to you, psychic means just personal realization, which everybody has from the time we're kind of born. Right. But we're taught, we just come you in know. with that veil of forgetfulness. Well, you no, know? no. We all have personal realizations. I can think back to the simple thing of I was probably five, six years old when the concept mind over matter, I came to that realization and exactly oh, yeah. how that worked and tested sure. it out. Yes. Yes. So, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so that's why I was trying to get a better understanding of what, what, what level and what you mean by psychic experiences and connections, because that's just a normal personal realization. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I, like I thought maybe psychic was when you come to have a vision or see something in mm -hmm. uh, a reality, shifted reality, which we're in all the time and we go in and out all day long, mm -hmm. but you see something then then comes to fruition in the mm -hmm. future uh, mm -hmm. event. So you psychically have seen something right. or grabbed onto something within the matrix mainframe mm -hmm. line, however this works here. Yeah. So I, that's what I was thinking. Psychic yeah. work. We have Even psychic a, abilities to mm -hmm. tap into the whole totality of consciousness to see something in a different time frame psychically and tap into it. I, right, I right. And it's as, well, as simple as a daydream. I mean, everyone has a daydream. So you really are tapping in at that moment. So, but you don't, most people don't realize that's what you're doing is yeah. you're just any, tapping any into who you really are. Yeah, yeah exactly. Lori, any shifted reality. Yeah. But no expand, like I know that if Jim and, and both Sophia can expand on it, I, it's like it's something I just was thinking about, you know, the last few days about it all and psychic and what does that mean mm -hmm. for different people. Right. So Jim, I know that you have quite the relationship with your team. Um, how well do you know your team and, and how long did it take to really develop that, um, well, that trust you know, with, with them? I took some classes and again, I had some very good teachers. It's like having the gift, but not exactly trying to, it's like, holding on to a wild horse, you know, what have I got? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it could take me off in the, into the woods before I knew it. And I wasn't too sure, but I just knew when I started connecting with certain people that I felt this was again, the right people to lead me, mm -hmm. to teach me. If that's get me, it's like taking my hand because the gift is either with you or it is not. And that's yeah. the way I would describe it. But again, it does need to understand it has to be controlled to some extent. You can't just right. run rampant with it. Mm -hmm. so again, one of the things that, I kind of laugh at it about because there's a lot of people get inspiration to say something to people, but to walk up to a, cold, to a stranger cold turkey and say something that might scare them. Well, believe yeah. it or not, it does happen to me occasionally, but I really work on not letting my mouth run off at the top because I'm not here to scare people. That's not my job. Right. But one story, if I can share it, was about a person that comes into the store that I work out of all my relations here in Indianapolis. And uh, walked up to a couple that I didn't know, and this came out of my mouth apparently because somebody told me it happened, and I don't believe I said it, but they said I did say it, so I have to fess up for it. And they <laughs> yeah. said I walked up to this couple and I asked them, "Where do you live? In a house or an apartment?" They said, "Oh, we live in a house." And I said, "No, you don't. You live in an apartment." And I walked away from them. And another gentleman said, "Well, I was told by this couple that he said that's what made me believe it because what happened two months after I told them that lived in an apartment, they." Had, going on a vacation out of town and where they were going to ho their house flooded because the pipeline broke, you know, water line broke. So where did they move into an apartment temporarily? So I didn't know I was telling them what they were going to face, but that's yeah. one wow. little example of what I was, what in some respects preparing them for it, even though they weren't prepared for it. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you just explained, yeah, Jim, what I just said. So you had a psychic premonition of something then you didn't understand it, but it came to be, you saw it in the future, something that happened in the future yeah. there. Yeah. About the apartment. So, so it's it, something it, that they moved it, to, right? In the future. Mm -hmm. And your guides really have a unique ability to see and observe you from a, a higher level, and they can see what's going on in the future. They can relay those messages to you. It's fascinating. Um, Sophia, how long did it take you to trust your abilities? I didn't know that they weren't supposed to be trusted. So you're just born that way and you've always yeah. been that way and you've always had the connection. So it wasn't, you didn't yeah. have to earn or learn that trust, huh? No. So you just innately had it. Wow. That's fascinating. The two, the differences between the two. Um, Sophia, how well do you know your team? Um, my joy guide, uh, I've been working with him the most. Um, and then as far as the deity that I work with, um, I'm working, I work with Odin and uh, Frigg, and that's probably like an everyday connection going on five years, but they've always been there and been a part of it. Um, the Norse Pantheon stepped forward when I was 11, wow. and I automatic wrote before I even knew what it was. Wow. Yeah. It was That's pretty, how I got started. Mm -hmm. It was pretty powerful, very yep. comforting. Um, the fact that I stood in my power at, at a very young age, people were intimidated by me, I guess, because I had very few friends. One friend I still have from the fourth grade because she never was, you know, I, I guess I was not off putting to her because the old saying out of the mouth of babes I guess I uh, was the uh, <laughs> epitome of that but um, basically most part it, it's Jojo my joy guide um, a lot of uh, mental mediumship imaging um, and then just, I mean for the most part the deity and the guides. I mean, we have, I have an alchemist. I have a master teacher. Um, still, I guess I've worked more with the elementals than I have my guides. So I think creating a solid, what I call a handshake mm -hmm. is um, intention. And if you're called to do it, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like any other uh, religion, in my opinion, there's a calling to it. Yeah. And um, honoring that calling and maintaining your integrity, which is all boils down to intention. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's every day. You know, I've hit it and I tried to be normal. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Sophia, tough being you, huh? I ha yeah, <laughs> I have a question for you, Sophia. Then when, when um, what age? Because like you say, you were born with it and like... I, I, like, and you always had it, and so you were comfortable with it. But what age did you think that you had to hide it? Like, when did that happen that you thought, well, this isn't normal, or that people don't think it's normal? Or Probably five. <laughs> Great yeah. question. Wow. Five. So, um, I was in a parochial school, and um, a lot of what I had to say would put the ministerial staff, you know, aback. I mean, I remember getting those reactions, you know, and the wide eyes and the, how do you know this? And, mm -hmm. and people in total disbelief of what you're telling them, right? Yeah. Like how could you possibly know something like right, that? Right. Right. And with that comes being ostracized <laughs> and being treated differently. And I, I didn't want to be treated differently. And then I just started getting used to it. Does uh, does so you just back? like went undercover type of thing and, and hit it? Sorry, so you went That's undercover okay. and hit it at that point, or that, yeah, that was my question. Yeah, my, well, I just I realized that the reception was not there because the culture that I was raised in did not receive it well, but I refused to deny you know i always stood in my power i always said what i had to say i was that kid that got put in the hallway mm -hmm. you know 
and very disruptive. I mean, you can ask Jim and Brian when I'm at the healing circle. Sometimes I, I get, I bounce, I get shaky and being in a room full of 30 children can be quite overwhelming because no one told me how to control it. I had to teach myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did it brilliantly. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, have you had this ability in other lifetimes? Are you aware of any other lifetimes? Probably mm -hmm. looking at my birth chart, my numerology and other things like that. I would say, yes, this is not my first, um, experience with, uh, the blessing and the honor and the responsibility of being extremely gifted. Yeah, it is a gift. No doubt yes. about it. Yeah. And it, it's, um, it's incredible um, how connected you both are, and um, and it's really really needed in the world today, especially now. So, I think yeah. I see the I think I see the commonality here. The commonality mm -hmm. seems to be that a lot of us have come out of uh, organized religion backgrounds of yep. some kind. Like I myself uh, went to a Catholic school, a Catholic grammar school, and Catholic high school, and of course my interests were. Not necessarily appreciated by the uh, by the ruling garniture, you know, of said establishment. <laughs> well said. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> so, and I really quickly, like maybe at the age of I think eleven, understood that religion was just a divide and conquer thing, and a business at the same time. It's just a business, and that's why I never, I never like replaced, uh, you know, that the church aspect uh, with some other church, with some other religion or religious movement i've always been like a a soul practitioner you could say by, mm -hmm. by just being a student of life and a student of all the um, all the occult material i could get my hands on mm -hmm. you know, everything from crowley to you know various wiccan literature uh mm -hmm. buddhism uh Gnosticism. You get a real thing. thirst for it, a hunger, yeah, to know more and to expand and and accept new concepts. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Jim, there was something uh, very curious about uh, you and Grandpa Brian, and I believe Sophia, you've been helping as well. Um, carry, uh, you've been helping spirits to pass on um, that are stuck and uh, not able to realize, you know, where they're at, and. Um, Right. you're effectively helping others just to transcend and uh, realize that they're not in the body anymore. This is fascinating to me. Um, what's your experience with this? Well, I'll start with the most important thing I teach people is to learn to relax. Yeah. If you're uptight, you cannot open yourself up. It's the peace of mind that has to reside within you. Mm, you must be point. comfortable with it yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not you're never going to quite connect completely. It's like getting a half of the sentence and never being able to finish it. So yeah. first off, real simple, learn to relax. And again, we might call that meditating or call it quiet time. There's many ways to look at it because when you're relaxing and call it your quiet time, you're looking inside of yourself. You're not necessarily looking across the room for an answer from another person mm -hmm. because the answers are within yourself because you were gifted from the inception of you coming to the planet Earth as long as you, your journey included to open yourself up. Because again, some journeys are to remain very physical. Others are to, like in Sophia's case, it's from the word get go. Don't forget who you really are. Right. What, then Be you open and receptive, it. yeah. And facing yourself is not always the easiest person to face. Ooh, that's for sure, yep. Uh, especially you have to put up every day with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if no you're doubt. not being honest to self, then you become very frustrated with yourself because you think, why am I having to over-exaggerate something? What am I? You're wholly complete and you're enough. That's right. That Whole, complete, and one All with the universe. Simple stuff. That's why I promote, approach it from a simple aspect, mm -hmm. and then you'll finally relax enough so that you don't make it complicated. Gotcha. Grandpa the more Brian? complicated, the less you're going to move forward gracefully yeah. and ease, with grace and ease. Right. Grace and ease. I love that. Grandpa Brian, what's your experience on helping uh, some of these souls transcend uh, this realm and on to the next? What is what is the most fascinating experience you had where you actually knew that you helped the spirit <laughs> transcend? Uh, was one Friday night when I was okay. out having dinner with Jim and Heather and uh, wow. a spirit came up to Jim. It was... Uh, 
a lady that she overdosed. She was, um, her family didn't want to have nothing to do with her because, you know, she was a drug addict all her life. And uh, that night, you know, Jim said, let us see. And then after we're done, you know, we'll take care of this. And uh, we all went out front and held our, held hands with her in the center of us. And we sent her as much love as we could while Jim was helping her cross over. Wow. So her it was... family members, her family members to help her cross over. So a team effort here. So you're pulling not only your guides in yourselves, but as a collective, you're pulling together with that energy to help them. Um, Correct. It's fascinating to me that they're not aware of their situation. You know? Well, again, when you don't have information, how would you know anything? Again, if there's nobody there to teach you. Uh, yeah, I going they, into it, you don't have it, so you, you're not aware of it. I, I mean, see. Where, yeah. where, where is the school system to teach people this basic stuff? It doesn't mm -hmm. have to refine you all into what you might call a professional psyche, yeah. but... It should teach you the basis of what life is about, not what it's metaphysical uh, one hundred one, making money and being popular. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. It's important to feel. It's okay to feel good about yourself. Most important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Feel good about yourself. Yep. Um, Sophia, uh, does this happen with you quite a bit? Do you find yourself uh, in that capacity, or are you more? I, I've had a couple experiences. I was actually there um, that night that Grandpa Brian spoke about, and it was absolutely beautiful because um, she, I think, had been, I feel that she was in that state for over a year, but Spirit's time and our time is not the same, mm -hmm. but right. still to be liberated from that dynamic, it's such an honor to be a part of that. Um I do have a slightly funny story to <laughs> uh, share. Um, the last time that I helped a spirit cross, I was actually it was a Wednesday night and I was very, very, very sick, literally like laying in bed, you know, one of those. And uh, all of a sudden I hear a male voice, not audibly, but it, it's different. It was in the front of my mind. And it was like, uh, como se llama? Uh -huh. um, and I, I know enough Spanish to get in, out of a fight, and get a beer. So <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, and I can count. So <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I literally, you know, spirit, you have tools, you know, that you're given. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so he's approaching me. And then I start getting um, uh, pressure on my throat, mm -hmm. and because so he because he was connecting with me, I allowed it, mm -hmm. and because I'm always in service, sick as a dog or whatever, um, and uh, I literally got my phone out and Google translated the Perfect. entire conversation, Perfect. and um, he was basically asking me what I am, not so much as who I am, because I believe that if you are using, employing, and sharpening your gifts, I think energetically, we look different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why they're attracted to people that have potential, because they have that um, it kind of, from, from what they're showing me, it kind of looks like an iridescence around the head. Mm -hmm. um, and they're attracted to it. Um, your frequency, they're picking up on your frequency and they yeah. recognize something in you. That's yeah. why they're drawn to you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And long story short, um, he had a Catholic background and he was convinced that if he crossed over that he was going to hell. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you know, in simple communicated terms that all you have to do is ask and call for your ancestors. So whomever went before you, mm -hmm. you know, release your guilt, release your anger, release your frustration and ask for help that, that, you know, if you can ask me for help, what, how is talking to your parents, grandparents, whoever has crossed before you call to them. Mm -hmm. And it was every bit of a 
five minute conversation convincing him that he was not going to burn in hell. He was convinced because he um, was drunk and choked on his own. Yeah. Vomit. That. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Love wow. that. Mm -hmm. um, and he was mm -hmm. convinced that because he was drunk, which what he considered a sin. Sure. He, he was. And I'm like, you know, just, Relax. I'm held accountable as a light worker, as an mm -hmm. energy worker. Every single word, syllable, intention that yeah. I project, I am held accountable for it. Right. And that's what I told him. I said, if, if I'm giving you misinformation, I'm going to be held accountable for that. Why would I waste my time to mislead you? And I, it just felt like he took a really big breath. Mm -hmm. And like two beings, like two white beings came. And this is not visual. This is all mental. Okay. And it just felt like a big exhale. And then he was gone. So it clicked with him. It finally yeah. clicked. Yeah. yeah. I said, I don't know you. I'm mm -hmm. honored that you're here. Mm -hmm. But just call for your ancestors and think of the good times when you were little. Cause a lot of people get stuck in my opinion in low vibration, the anger, the hate, the sadness, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's very sticky energy. And right. if you can get them to focus on something happy and joyful and their loved ones, you know, and kind of like redirecting for lack of a better illustration, a child, mm -hmm. you know, you're like, you know, have your thought, that's fine, but it's not serving you. So right. try this. And yeah. he did, and it was just like a big breath, a huge it, release. Think, yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. So, but what an honor! Honestly. Absolutely. Yep. It, I'll mm -hmm. never forget it. Any I of bet. that? Was this recently? Uh, that was two years ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. so sick! Oh my gosh! Wow. Horrible. But amazing hey, that you could do it when you're sick. I what I feel. Where the gods call, the gods quit. And if you're being put in a situation, mm -hmm. regardless of the dynamic, do the best you can and you will be blessed for it. And that's exactly Absolutely. what happened. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get a lot more of that, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm open to it. I mean, right. yeah. none of us are going to be here forever. What kind of legacy am I going to leave behind? Right, right. You're being of value to not only yourself, others, but also the etheric realm. And that's amazing. It really is. And it takes honesty, integrity, um, all of that within yourself. You really have to hold that vibration because if you don't, yeah, it's not going to work for you. And it's not going to work for them either. Mm -mm. Wow. Jim, what was the most uh, interesting um, psychic experience that you've had as far as, um, you know, meeting a stranger or somebody on the street where um, you felt drawn to just talk to them and and what kind of reaction did people have? Where You know, I would imagine some could be very open about it, maybe others not so much, but do you remember anything, um, well, any situation? I, what you said about uh, meeting somebody on the street of life, okay? Yeah. Interesting one of mine, my personal ones, I feel it had nothing to do with the person I would recognize other than uh, I was on vacation in San Francisco one time. My daughter was living in L.A. at the time, so we'd gone to visit her, and we took a little trip up to San Francisco, and I was on the streets just walking around, you know, being a tourist, if that's the word, okay? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we were near a park. There was a bunch of homeless people there. Mm -hmm. And again, think of the energy that they project. Or, uh, they're going to attract spirits of that kind of nature to their Absolutely. group. Absolutely. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, if it I does. Guess, if I'm going to the biker's bar, what kind of spirits am I going to attract? Sure. Spirits, okay? <laughs> Not, I don't call them bad. They're just, that's their nature. Uh, rough group. Well, anyway, I was walking <laughs> to the park, by the park, and all of a sudden I felt an energy that was running up to me or flying behind my back. I turned around immediately. I said, stop. Because spirits, if they're going to approach you, must approach you from the front. If they come behind your back and run up behind you, that's inappropriate. And again, you have to sense and feel that. It's just like feeling the energy behind you or in front of you or beside you. And mm -hmm. once you recognize how to, you have the power to stop anything from coming to you. I agree. They saying, I command you to stop, basically, in so many yeah. words. You wouldn't that let somebody else just. That, uh, I had not been in this experience for a very long time. And 
I just knew when to tell them to stop. And that's nice. what happened. Otherwise, yeah. I would have been basically spiritually attacked. Right. And, uh, sometimes, like I said, uh, there's so many little trivial things that have uh, happened to me just back to what Sophia said. I call it. I'm not sure how many guys or people that I work with in spirit and as far as that, because I keep myself pretty open minded to mm -hmm. say the ones I need the most are with me now. Mm -hmm. And if they're telling me to shut up, then I need to shut up. But I, I simply say they tell me to shut up and start talking, which means quit using your brain. Because mm -hmm. I don't right. need to use my brain. Right. Maybe just I'm the mouthpiece. We're the messengers. Right. And again, we are all filtering we because we are filters of what we say. That's why I call it conscious channeling. So if I start talking that is uncomfortable for Jim, I probably won't say it. As long as I'm comfortable with it, then I will say it. Because gotcha. I've had to use sometimes language I normally would not use, but I'm just telling them, the people I'm talking to, this is the way they're telling me to say it. And they'll look at me and say, but that's the way my spirit would have said it. They're whoever yep. they want me to communicate with. Right. So right. there again, when you start talking like the person that you want to talk to that's deceased, they relate to it more if they would talk in their language instead of my language. Yeah. That's another yeah. confirmation that you're talking to the person that they want to talk with. Mm -hmm. so there's quite a few of those experiences. And again, it's like, how do, how do we know what we're telling them? We, right. we just say it and let it go. Right. That's what it's we just, call trust. Yep. And trust and believe. Because again, when you connect, your intention is to tell the truth, I hope. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Not, I don't want to be part of your story. Right. Right. I mean, I like what you're telling me, but please tell me the truth. Right. And it's validation, too, for that person that you're reading for, right. you know, so that's really important. Delavore, do you have you ever experienced anything where you knew something was going on and you had to tell that person and you really didn't want to tell them, but you felt well, like you had to? I <laughs> You were well, drawn to? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 one time. Uh, my brother came home uh, from, he had been out, out somewhere, I don't know where. Mm -hmm. He came home and he said, you're not going to believe what happened. And I, I just blurted out, let me guess, you got arrested. And it was true. <laughs> 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 it was true. <laughs> so, you know, that's a like a brief little, you know, glimpse of mm -hmm. insight into right. a level of reality that I should not have had access sure. to because this was way before the internet. This was like in the 70s. You know, so yeah. no way I could have known any of that. It was a but, knowing. You just mm, knew it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and there have been a couple of instances like that where, you know, they tell you trust your instinct or trust your first uh, reaction. Mm -hmm. And if you go back and you change it, it's usually the wrong answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yep. usually, usually that, that, is, that is the case. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Karen, have you ever experienced anything quite like that yourself? Oh, tons. My whole life's oh. like that. I almost started. Oh. Actually, my dad and I used to play a game when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he used to ask me, he'd say, okay, if you could guess what I'm thinking, I'll give you a million bucks. And it would be just a random thought. And then our job was to try to guess what he was thinking in his mind and who would guess closest. So we played those games since I was a little girl. Yeah. And so the amazing thing was, uh, so far, I'm... Uh, Three, three million knows me now. <laughs> <laughs> You're all pay up, pop. <laughs> yeah. I told, you know, a few times I was a kid, a teenager, you know, and Ed just guessed what he was thinking completely. Get the answer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we played those things all the time. Yeah. How about you, Grandpa Brian? Uh, no, not really. Uh, no? I'm actually starting to connect with them now. Uh, yeah, I'm getting more and more information every night are you working with your guides are you working with guides or higher self or all uh, of the above all the above guides mm -hmm. source higher self uh, jim has really taught me to just relax like he said yeah i open myself up and then now uh like when i was doing the show with courtney there at night and they just kept giving me information and i just kept blurting it out yeah, great show you guys had. Uh, that Stars of the Morning Light, Courtney, awesome. Uh, it's good to see you on the circuit, both of you, by the way. Um, the more of us that are out here doing this, uh, the more light we can shine on everyone. So fantastic. Good for you guys. And you've got a show coming up on Monday as well? Yes, uh, it is uh, 
how men can get in touch with their feminine side and I it love it basically i'll be about that and how mm -hmm. that getting in touch with your feminine side mm -hmm. is not gay it's right it's it, balance it, it, and grounding and balance. yeah exactly yeah. We all need to be in touch with both parts of ourselves because we are feminine and masculine. Yes, for sure. Well, exactly. That, impl that implies a level of control. And that's what I've been saying the whole time about, you know, uh, bringing the various superpowers of the human bio mind online that uh, you don't want to just uh, just open the floodgates and just let everything come in because that way you're not, not going to get anything done. You have to be able to control it and shut it off when you need to because like right. for example if you're if you're concentrating and you're working on some spreadsheet you don't necessarily need to have uh, awareness of everything that's going on in the universe necessarily mm -hmm. you just need to you know if you're focused on one task that you really need to do that's mission critical for you then mm -hmm. you know you gotta focus on just that right definitely wow amazing does anybody in chat have any questions uh, yeah, questions, questions. <laughs> uh, let's see. You know, Lucky Smith was saying, often when I say or write things for others, it's my subconscious trying to send me a message for, for me to learn. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Yeah, not seeing too much on that. If anybody's got a question, go ahead and post it. Um, yeah, fascinating. Um, just a fascinating subject. Um, yeah, do you I, ever pick? I, go ahead, oh, Karen. Oh, I'm just going to ask Jim or and Sophia, um, just because there's so many different methods of getting into that frame of mind. You know, where you shift and you you know you can get that psychic vision or that you know feeling or different things so i know there's all kinds like for, for me most of mine uh, i'm a dreamer so i do it mostly in lucid dreaming you know mm -hmm. to get all my visions in mean, my sleep state more than anything you know in mm -hmm. that type but what, what about you too like when when do you find you get most of your messages because you know it could be like people purposely meditate or you purposely daydream or shift or you walk and meditate you know what i, I mean like I would say omens, omens. If you keep your eyes open, you will see omens all around you. It oh, could times. be something something as simple as the, the song on the radio. That's why I keep the radio on when I drive. Uh, uh, it's. I, I had a recent experience with an omen. I was going to see. I was going to see a house, and the name of the realtor was Fox. And I'm driving down the road, and all of a sudden, a fox jumps into the middle of the road. From the bushes into the middle of the road and just stops i come to a stop the fox comes to a stop and he's staring at me for about five se seconds and then just jumps back into, into the same bush from where he came and i was like that's that that's an omen that's definitely an omen wow and i was right it's mm -hmm. funny you know how spirit works with you um mm -hmm. and your divine team you know if they're just trying to get you a message they're going to do it any way they can go ahead yeah. sophia in my experience, yeah. spirit will use your symbolic, I guess, for lack of um, memory. So, for instance, if someone sees a dog, if you look in a dream dictionary, whatever, it means fidelity. But if that person's been bitten by a dog, that's not going to be a symbol. So it, it's for me cultivating my gift, which I'm a perpetual student, is, you know, having that dialogue with your guides and building, you know, kind of like what Delabor just said with the Fox, you mm -hmm. know, for him, that was a good omen. That was confirmation of the dynamic that he was in the, the correct path. Um, but I, I would say um, build your symbolic um, dictionary or mental database so you give spirit more to work with. That's why I encourage reading books, talking to other people, you know, and creating, you know, an environment that spirit can use, you know, purposing to, you know, if you're having a bad day, be like, okay, this is a challenge and meet it, not crumble, 
you know, mm-hmm. because when you are gifted, I, I believe that life can become difficult because you're a threat. If you're edifying other people mm-hmm. and encouraging them, you're undoing lower energy situations and they will you know mess with you for lack of a better word but like jim had just said you know you have a physical body on a physical plane Mm -hmm. you have a trump card and our culture has conditioned us if we don't understand it we fear it i would be dead if i allowed (laughs) that okay (laughs) so it's about intention and boundaries if your intention is pure Mm-hmm. You can, I do not allow that. You know, I've, ha- I've had, you know, a couple times where the uh, information I was getting was not of the highest vibration and it was a flat, I rebuke you, Lee. Yeah, right. There's Lee. a question in chat for you mm-hmm. from Teresa D'Antone. Mm-hmm. Hope Hi, you're feeling Teresa. better, sis. Get better. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> for sure. I, don't have get, a black one. I can read it for you. Do you Thank get you. premonitions about others? And when do you choose to share or do you always share? I, Great question. That is a very good question. Um, I, I believe that this gift has um, and requires ethics. My intention is to harm none. Mm-hmm. If I get information, I will, you know, remind people, if you have something valuable, put it in a safe place. I'm not going to say, you know, someone's going to kick your door in and trash your house. I don't want to. You don't want to invoke any fear. Exactly. Because like attracts like. Right. So um, if I do get something, let's see, I got to reread it. (laughs) Uh, Let me reread it for you. Uh, Sorry. Do you get get premonitions about others? Yes. And when do you choose to share or do you always share? If there is a dynamic, depends on the relationship with the person, first of all, what kind of connection I have with them. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't approach strangers. Um, When it comes to readings, I don't just walk up to people and that's just not me. Everybody else can do whatever else they want to. but I do get premonitions. Um, I do get information in dreams. I get most of my information in waking life, like real time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I would say that if a message needs to be sent, I will be put in a position to give that message. But I don't go look and be like, oh, there's so and so. And I had something happen a couple months ago. My, mine is very real time here now type of in the moment yes Mm -hmm. in the moment Mm -hmm. and you're picking up those energies and you feel whether you can you feel like you can say something or or if you shouldn't approach someone you you innately kind of know that already don't you because you trust it correct feeling yeah i light a lot of candles for a lot of people and yeah. that's in that sense, you could say, uh, as, as you, Sophia, said, uh, using all those different modalities to to extract meaning from. In that sense, you could say that superstition does have a legitimacy in being more psychically receptive, because I'm like very superstitious regarding numbers. Some numbers are good, and some numbers are bad for me. Just yeah. For me, not right. necessarily for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. If, if, if something needs to be passed on um, to anybody, there is a dynamic that is created. I've had strangers walk up to me and be like, there's just something about you. I mean, in the grocery That's store. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm all everybody's the way they are for a very good reason. And I love people where they're at. Some people need healthier boundaries or speed bumps, if you will. But if somebody approaches me and I have a sentence, I will give it to them. But I'm not going to walk up to a stranger. That That is kind of, it's not my. Not my your message. style. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. no. Wow. Mm-mm. Fascinating. Oh, we got one more. We got a question for you, Jim. Um, if we know when and how someone is going to die. Are we causing them to break their soul contract if we tell them? 
Well, Another good always, one there, sis. A very, very powerful question because yes, it is. Maybe somebody does want to know if somebody they know personally is going to transition. And again, I always leave it to the. I don't like to make predictions. I tell them that's not my job here on the planet is to predict if somebody's passing. But I would say sometimes it comes to me very. Let's say for, to help the person to prepare for it, I'll just say within a short amount of time, or just there is no time yet. And sometimes yeah. because the will of the person is the one that's deciding when they really want to die because a lot of people hang on for long periods of time preparing to die again mm -hmm. I've been, i used to volunteer for hospice so it goes you get to see that actually happening a mm -hmm. lot of times okay yeah, very, Sometimes true. very quickly unexpectedly because mm -hmm. uh their mind says there's no reason for me to stay here i'm leaving as soon as i can and they can yeah. will themselves to die so that's mm -hmm. why it's very unpredictable to predict what you might call a passing of time other than it's back to you can pretty much feel a person getting ready to die. I've had several people tell me they thought they were going to die real soon. And I said, I didn't say it. I don't feel it, but that's what I felt. And sure enough, they're still alive. This is years later. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very hard to predict a person's passing, in my opinion, because there's still what we call free will. The right. free will of the person has to yep. decide what they want to do. And that's powerful. That's why yeah. I said it's very difficult, yep. but sometimes... I've had people wanting their somebody to die for they wanted to know when. And I said, I, it's hmm. not my place to call that. Nope. Right. Than, their stubbornness can make them last a long time. Oh, and that's people, true. That's very true. Yeah. People don't want to die sometimes because they want to make somebody else miserable. And you know that. Yeah. So that's back to free will. See, I I had a I had a premonitional dream about my brother's death, and I didn't even know that it was a premonition until about a month later and he right. when he had told us that he had been diagnosed with cancer and uh in the dream he was being executed by two men dressed in white and in the dream he he was being led up onto a stage where he was to be hanged and he was concerned about the well-being of the doctors and he said well i wouldn't want you guys to come crashing down on the stage with me shouldn't we test the stage first and, you know, I, I was wondering about that phrase, test the stage. What does that mean? I later came to understand that it was the stage of cancer. Okay. Yeah. And it was yep. about a month later that he was uh, diagnosed with cancer. And three and a half months later, he was dead. Yeah. yeah. So, well, that's incredible. Really but incredible. if you had asked me at that time, like what that dream meant, I would have told you I have no idea. Yeah. You know, because I didn't, I didn't see the future. I didn't see right. that as a premonition. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it is an incredible um, to to have that ability. It is an incredible responsibility, not only for yourself, but to others, to your guides, to the people you're reading for. Um, it really you got to really be standing tall and firm within yourself and be very grounded to do that kind of work. So I want to thank you both, Sophia, Jim, for helping uh, kind of enlighten people and bring a little bit of light into it. That's awesome. Um, we greatly appreciate it. We are coming to the end of the hour. And I did have a little surprise for uh, Grandpa Brian tonight and wanted to run a quick little video for you. So Brian, we know that you've got a beautiful little blue eyed puppy that is just adorable. I, all I want to do is grab her little face and kiss her. Um, so I put together a little video from some of the um, clips that you sent, uh, sent out. So here, here's a really cool introduction to Grandpa Brian's puppy dog little baby girl named Luna. So here's your first look at Luna, everybody. Here we go.
Oh, <laughs> thank you. That was great. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, hey, Jules. guess who's joining us? Jules, the alchemist. Hi, Jules. Just Jules. Hi. Yeah, Jules. Hello, everybody. How Hi. are you all going? Doing I'm good. out in the bush and I drove to get some signal just to come and say hello. Oh, good. Oh. Well, I'm glad you said hello. How's the weather? Oh, it's lush. Look, it's beautiful. All right. Woohoo. Look nice. at the clear skies. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you See, doing? I'm... What are you up to this weekend? Oh, community event. Uh -huh. And of course, they'll be dancing for me later. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> you can just dance your little feet off, huh? <laughs> yeah, dance my little feet off. Uh, we've got a fiddle player, so he's really good. Good fiddle player. Oh, so. good. Yeah. That'll be a yeah, very, yeah. very fun and joyous time for you. Great. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I was listening as I was driving. I had a little bit of signal in and out. Uh huh. So thank you all for your gifts and talents. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for Thanks, your Jill. gifts and talents, Jules. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, my my, I just want to add to with um, Sophia said it's intention, and of course that's truly everything comes from intention. But mm -hmm. what I got from when I started doing my my abilities is I um, got the message. It's just me that I'm working, and just all the different me's in different densities mm -hmm. is where I get the information from. Yep, mm -hmm. I get that. Yes, I mm -hmm. do. I understand that very well. Yes. Yeah, I don't yeah. give anything labels, as you know, so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No labels. That's, that's yep, no boxes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, thank you all. You got? Are you about to finish? About to close? Yes. Uh huh. So. Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Oh, well, that was good timing. Uh huh. Perfect timing. <laughs> Well, you have a wonderful weekend, Jules. Thank you for popping in. We enjoy having you on. Um, we were just going to talk about uh, Karen's got a new website, and oh, I'm going to yeah. share that with you real quick before okay. we go. Um, a new website. It's just, yeah, it's a new spot. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about it because this is your <laughs> shoe fantasy of yeah, a pair of right. shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's These a are kind cool. of a new Yeah. Yeah. So. Let let uh, your shoes do the walking as well as the talking and express oh yourself gosh. with a pair of shoes. Definitely. So that's called a pair of shoes. And there's Love all it. kinds of different designs. And I did all the graphics myself. I, because I hadn't been able to get home still with all the mandates and I was still stranded out here, um, I had to do something. So I did this the last week. So uh, it's been really fun. And so I did all the graphics, designed all the shoes and the things. And there's a whole men's line, too. So you just have to go to the shop page. So wow. this is the, the women's line that I did. Uh -huh. So, yep, there's flip-flops and this regular I sneakers the and high, high tops. tops. Yes. There's two different and types the bags. of high tops. Yeah, These little weekend or bag. Incredible. Or so I, I'll keep adding adding some things. And I love that. There's lots of designs in every color. So Amazing. I, yeah. So you just click on the uh, shop? Just the shop page. And yep. if you go and there you can, uh, and go down, down and you'll see there's women's. the women's. Shop okay, the women's. here's the men's And if stuff. you go, there's All the right. men's. But you just click each of the shop. Yeah. That goes into the men's Look side. That. Oh, yeah, I, I did these. shirts for the men. <laughs> oh, I love the shirts. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. These are yeah. really groovy. Really, really groovy. Look yeah, at this. So some cool design. I love so, it. I love it. Yeah, so if everybody in the community just takes a look, I'd love everybody's feedback just about graphics and what they like or not like and Absolutely. ideas. And I just really had a, a fun time doing it. I and, love that. And if anybody's yeah. interested in that, you can go to the Queen of Courts Crystal Network.com, a pair of shoes and get yourself yeah. some shoes and uh, or a bag or a shirt or, or whatever. what have you. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I've got some good news too, actually. Sure. I, need to, I, need, I need to raise some money so I could get home. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, but man, you put a lot of work into that. So pretty amazing. It's true though. Awesome. I'm sorry, Jules, what were you saying? We've got some good news that all the mandates have been taken off all our schools. Oh, that's good. amazing. Oh, excellent, excellent. Oh, amazing. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, so it's all happening, guys. Get ready to connect with the community, and I hope your garden's all ready to grow your own food. Oh, yeah. that'll be awesome. Yeah. Um, now, Karen, didn't you say your mandates have lifted for travel? Just two days ago, believe it or not, everybody. Yes. Before, See, two days ago happening. in Canada, yep, it's I happening. could not go anywhere. Even in awesome. the province, I couldn't take a plane, train, or a bus or anything. So it's yeah. two days ago. Wow. So, yep. Well, good. Freedom. Shifted on the 21st. The 21st. Yep, was the exactly, yeah, exactly, Jules. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, Fantastic. That's when it happened. So, well, yeah. I'd like to thank everybody that joined us tonight. Uh, again, we miss you, Teresa. We will see you next yeah. week. I am sure of it, positive. Um, and um, just want to thank everyone for such a great show. Thank you, Jim, for coming on. Really appreciate you. Mad respect and love for you. Sophia, same. Mad love and respect yeah. for you. Keep doing Definitely. what you're doing because you're making a difference. Jules, do what you do. You're making a difference. <laughs> Delabor, you as well. And Mm -hmm. Karen, thank you so much. Always appreciate your insight into everything. So um, congratulations on your website. Hey, everybody, um, I put the link in chat for you. Just click on the link. Go check it out. Uh, some great stuff for you. And then until next week, thank you, everyone week, in chat. Uh, next <laughs> week, yes. next yes. week uh, we, should, we will be discussing <laughs> virtual reality, not being That's necessarily correct. a reality correct. of virtue. Right. And yes. hopefully, hopefully we'll have... Uh, John from Max Vision Remote Viewing on. Yes, yes. correct. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you can. They can find it on the homepage, right? It's on the homepage already for next week's Perfect. show, and links Wonderful. there from all the articles and uh, who's going to be there. So it's all it's on the homepage about next week's show, yeah, and what we're going to be covering actually for part good. three. So if you want to hint about what we're going to be talking and delving into, it's uh, going to be quite amazing the next part. So it's on the homepage. Check it out. Wonderful. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Dal Labor. Appreciate that. Look forward to seeing you guys next week. And um, until then, be bold, be creative, and be loved. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Blessings. Bye-bye. Blessings to all.